Roaring Moon just got banned and I'm here to talk about the latest OU metagame, what it looks like, and why people are calling Gliscor overpowered. Now this is pretty rare, Gliscor is for all intents and purposes a supporting Pokemon. Typically when you give the overpowered moniker to something, it's something really overpowered, it's too strong. Think Ursaluna Blood Moon for example, or if we go even further back in time, things like Feromosa for example. But very rarely do you see a support Pokemon getting this much support to be potentially even banned. They're genuinely talking about banning Gliscor. But let me explain why in the first place. Also, this video is made possible by a sponsor. This video is sponsored by Factor and Factor 75. Factor 75 is America's number one ready to eat meal kit. They have an easy to use website where you pick the meals you want and they send it to you. Simply heat and eat the meal in two minutes, no shopping, no cooking required. For me, the convenience is big. Between my job and my YouTube channel, I don't have a lot of time, and Factor meals save a lot of the prep time and honestly stress about what I'm going to be eating. Also, the food is nutritious and helps me reach my fitness goals. It's very easy to get takeout or have something delivered, but Factor lets me resist that urge and eat something cheaper and healthier instead. On top of that, they're pretty flexible too. They have meal preference options like Calorie Smart or Vegan, and they have more than 27 meal options per week. I can choose different foods per week, and I can choose how many meals I get per week, too. Factor is a game changer from a convenience point of view. Use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code podfreezeioct 50 for 50% off your first box. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Now back to the video. Okay, so Gliscor, number one in the viability rankings, top dog in the tier, why is it the number one Pokemon? You really have to start with the fundamentals. Now, these stats are not especially powerful. When you look at base 510, it's really not that great. It's good, but not great. You have a high defense stat, pretty okay attack stat. The distribution is fine, but what you really have to look at here is its Toxic Orb moveset. So you always be running Toxic Orb and then Poison Heal. Now that is a lot of healing per turn, and Gliscor doesn't get Roost anymore in Generation 9, so you don't have that, you have Protect instead. But really the key is Earthquake, and then Toxic, and then either Substitute or a move like Spikes, and we'll get into why that is so powerful. So at the Fundamentals, well first of all, you can run any spe uh, EV spread, this is not... Uh, necessarily optimal. You can add special defense EVs. You don't have to be this fast either. You can go slower if you want. This is the general idea though. And really you have to look at the fundamentals of the ground typing. So when a ground type has toxic, that's inherently a good idea because the only way to be immune to toxic is to be a steel or poison type Pokemon and that's weak to earthquake. So that creates a really nasty bind on an opponent because if they want to try and switch into Gliscor, they're going to have to eat a Toxic, and then you get into a Protect Toxic cycle. If it has Substitute, that's even more annoying. And the real problem is you can't go to a Steel or Poison type, you get hit by Earthquake. So you do have options like Corviknight, but we'll talk about why Corviknight really isn't that great later. But the difference between now and say Generation 7 or before is that Gliscor now has the move Spikes. That is very different from before. A ground type Pokemon having the move Toxic is nothing too revolutionary, it's always been a thing. But the reason it's especially good now is because of spikes. Gliscor can pretty freely get spikes on most teams, because if you try and play too passively, trying to switch around Earthquake, switch around Toxic, you're just getting hit by spikes over and over again, three layers go up, and you're not going to win a lot of games if you're taking 25% of damage every time you try and switch in. You're simply not going to win games like that. So Pokemon like Corviknight have Defog, but Defog doesn't work when you have the second Pokemon, Golden Go. Gliscor Golden Go is almost meta-defining, I'd say it's definitely the most popular core. And why is it so popular? You have Golden Go, and its ability, I've talked about it many times on the channel, but if you don't know, you're immune to status moves, which means Defog doesn't work versus you. So Pokemon like Corviknight cannot Defog Gliscor Spikes. Then if you try and rapid spin it, it doesn't work either because Golden Go is a ghost type Pokemon. So you end up in a very nasty situation where Gliscor annoys you with Earthquake and Toxic, then it gets hazards up and you can't remove the hazards pretty easily. 
even looking at Great Tusk, you think, okay, Great Tusk, maybe it has a good matchup versus Gliscor because you could have the move Ice Spinner, which is an ice type move. But really, that doesn't work too well because all Gliscor needs is one Toxic. If you can Toxic the Great Tusk, then you protect, and pretty soon, Gliscor can actually do enough damage where Great Tusk really can't effectively Rapid Spin. Because every turn, it's Rapid Spinning, it's taking Toxic damage, it'll have to use Ice Spinner, Gliscor can block that with Protect. You're taking way too much damage. Great Tusk is good, it's probably the best way to hazard remove, but it's really not that great against Gliscor Golden Go because Golden Go can have, for example, the Air Balloon item. It really is tricky, obviously, to be immune to the ground type attacks. Great Tusk is still the number one hazard remover because it can Ice Spinner, it can Headlong Rush, but it's definitely not that easy because you have the Toxic and then the Air Balloon on Golden Go. So the end result is Gliscor and Golden Go really have like a clamp on the metagame. It's pretty tough to remove hazards and people are calling it overpowered. How do you even break through a team like Gliscor and Golden Go? Because Gliscor also has terrestrialization. Now that's obviously a benefit for Gliscor, but I wouldn't call it the most important part. The most important part is spikes here, but typically you're going to see Terra Water, for example. Very straightforward, now you're not weak to water anymore. You can see Terra Dragon too, to make yourself better versus Ogre Pond. It's almost honest in a way in that you know what it's going to do every single time. There's nothing out of the box, but you can't stop it. It's just really, really good, and that's why people are calling it overpowered. And one funny thing is you sometimes end up in situations where you end up in a Gliscor versus Gliscor stalemate in a way. Both people have Gliscor on the field and neither Pokemon wants to switch out. Neither player wants to switch out into an Earthquake, neither player wants to switch out into a Toxic. So you end up in a PP stall where Gliscor versus Gliscor just hitting each other over and over again, really doing nothing because it is a true stalemate position in a way. So that is... Not a reason to ban something, I just thought it was funny and worth pointing out about a Pokemon that can be overpowered. So the question is, do you ban Gliscor or do you ban Golden Go? Do you ban anything at all, right? Because even before Gliscor, Golden Go was already a meta-defining Pokemon. Before Gliscor was using spikes, you just had different spiking Pokemon. You had Samurott Hisui and you had Ting Lu. Even looking at the viability rankings right now, Ting Lu is still an a rank Pokemon. Samurott Hisuian is still an a rank Pokemon. You can still go for the Spikes and Golden Go strategy just with different Pokemon. So banning Gliscor, you're, you would be banning an annoying Pokemon, but does it really solve the issue? Yes and no. You do remove the number one Pokemon that can do it, but also not really. So do you ban Golden Go instead? What really is the solution here? Not if there's no consensus. People have ideas like, oh, we can ban Gliscor or we can ban Golden Goat. You ask a different OU player, they'll tell you a different idea of how to approach the metagame. But right now, it does feel like Gliscor and Golden Go have kind of a dominating position in the meta. And just scrolling down the viability rankings now. And you go down the list, you see a lot of Pokemon you probably expect to see. Typically, like Zamazenta, Clefable, Dragonite, Iron Moth, Manaphy. These are all Pokemon you would expect to see being top Pokemon. Ninetales Alola is good because there's a lot of hyper offense right now, so you're going to see a lot of that. Rebombi fans would be pretty happy to see Rebombi in A- minus rank. Sticky webs are still good right now, which is very good to see, and it's kind of related to the Golden Go thing. Very tough to remove hazards, so that's why Sticky Web is more valuable than it's been in the past. Aloma Mola. I think Cerulege is kind of underrated right now. It got Poltergeist, which makes it really, really strong. I think it's a little underrated right now. Corviknight in B rank, B plus rank, because of the issues with Golden Go. You can't do anything versus Golden Go. You technically wall Gliscor, but Gliscor uses spikes over and over again. And what did you gain from it? Not much. So Golden Go beating Corviknight is the reason it's that low. And that's basically my thoughts on the metagame. I don't really know the right way to approach the Gliscor Golden Go thing after the Roaring Moon ban. But I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.